Finals SAQ 33 Splenectomy A 26-year-old patient with stage 4B Hodgkin's disease with spread to lymph nodes and other organs requires an open splenectomy. A. List the specific factors that are of importance when planning your anesthetic management. Think about the disease process, the treatment so far and the operation. Airway. Meticulous airway assessment. The airway may be compromised by lymph nodes in the neck or oropharynx and mediastinal mass compression. If there is airway compression in the mediastinum, the patient may complain of cough, dyspnea, hoarse voice, autopnea, syncope with positional change or no symptoms at all. Identify what position the patient is least symptomatic in. Assess with CT thorax. Compression may be at the tracheal or bronchial level. Plan A is keeping the patient spontaneously ventilating until the airway is secured. Plan B is rigid bronchoscopy. There may be mucositis from chemotherapy, care with airway instrumentation, breathing. Atelectasis with or without pneumonia may be present due to airway collapse caused by lymph nodes and immunocompromised state. Assess with chest x-ray and CT thorax. Bleomycin confers lifelong susceptibility to pulmonary toxicity with exposure to high FiO2. Oxygen saturations should be maintained at 88-92%. to 92%. Minimize supplemental oxygen whenever possible. Cardiovascular. Compression of major vessels with or without the heart by media stenal lymph nodes may occur. There is risk of cardiovascular collapse under general anesthesia. Assess with CT thorax. Cardiac dysfunction may be caused by chemotherapy. Damage to valves, vessels, and pericardium may occur due to media stenal radiotherapy. Assess with echocardiography for myocardial compression, ventricular dysfunction, and pericardial effusion. Central venous excess or POT may be present for chemotherapy. Neurological. Nerve or spinal cord compression may be present due to lymphoma mass. Peripheral or autonomic neuropathies may occur due to chemotherapeutic agents. There may be prolonged gastric emptying, necessitating an acid pre-medication and RSI. Pharmacology. Consider the side effects of chemotherapy. Examples include cisplatin, causing autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, nausea and vomiting, leomycin or busulfan, causing pulmonary toxicity, cyclophosphamide or ephosphamide, causing hemorrhagic cystitis, cytarabine, causing chemical conjunctivitis, doxorubicin or downorubicin, causing cardiotoxicity, oxaliplatin, Vincristine or taxanes causing peripheral neuropathy, irinotesan causing diarrhea. Gastrointestinal. There may be malnourishment due to anorexia associated with treatment, painful mouth due to mucositis, or fullness of abdomen from splenomegaly. The patient may have vomiting or diarrhea due to chemotherapy. Hematology. Pancytopenia may be present with low platelets and hemoglobin. This may need to be corrected prior to surgery. Regional anesthesia may be contraindicated. Significant blood loss can occur intra-op. Ensure adequate IV access and cross-match. Immune and infection. The patient is likely immunocompromised due to disease and chemotherapy. Assess for intercurrent infection. Provide meticulous infection control. Cutaneo musculoskeletal. There may be easy bruising, bleeding from minor cuts, these are associated with thrombocytopenia and thin fragile skin. Care with positioning and padding. Edema from hypoalbuminemia associated with liver impairment or nephrotic syndrome may be present. Difficulty with venous excess should be anticipated. Renal dysfunction may occur due to chemotherapy, nephrotic syndrome, obstruction of renal vessels or ureters, lymphogranulomatous infiltration of parenchyma, or amyloid. This impacts on perioperative drug choices. Dehydration and hypotension should be avoided to avoid acute kidney injury. Liver dysfunction due to chemotherapy or disease may be present. This may lead to disordered coagulation, contraindication of regional anesthesia, and affects anesthetic drug PKPD. B. Outline the options for providing post-op analgesia for this patient and give possible 
disadvantage of each. Oral analgesics are insufficient on their own. NSAIDs may be contraindicated to avoid renal dysfunction. Paracetamol, those may need adjusting in the presence of liver dysfunction. Oral morphine and its active metabolites may accumulate in the presence of renal failure. Epidural analgesia may be contraindicated due to thrombocytopenia or coagulopathy. CVS instability may occur as high spinal block would be required. High block may cause compromise to respiratory function, which may be already compromised due to mediastinal disease. Paravertebral block avoids cardiovascular instability that may result from epidural, but may be contraindicated due to thrombocytopenia or coagulopathy. Patient control analgesia may require high dose to achieve adequate pain relief. Long-acting opioids such as morphine may accumulate in the presence of renal dysfunction, leading to opioid toxicity. Fentanyl PCA may be a more suitable alternative in renal dysfunction. Practice sheath and transverse abdominis plane block. These do not reduce visceral pain but reduces analgesic requirements overall. They might not achieve adequate cover for proximal end of the wound. However, they may be feasible when low platelet counts contraindicates neuraxial blocks. C. Which vaccinations should this patient receive and what is the optimal timing of these? For Haemophilus influenza B, pneumococcus vaccine, and meningitis B and C vaccine, the patient should receive at least two weeks preoperatively or two weeks afterwards and three months after completion of chemo or radiotherapy. Pneumococcal vaccine booster dose every five years and influenza vaccine every year. Additional information. Examiner report. Candidates had not read the question carefully as they should have done. They may lack knowledge on implications of Hodgkin's lymphoma and its treatment for anesthesia. Rather than focusing on specific factors of importance, many candidates wrote about general problems when anesthetizing for a splenectomy. Hodgkin's lymphoma. This is a cancer of the lymphatic system and presents with lymph adenopathy, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, etc. In stage 1, there is single lymph node involvement. In stage 2, two or more lymph nodes, same side of the diaphragm, are affected. In stage 3, lymph nodes on both sides of the diaphragm are affected, which may include the spleen or contiguous extra lymphatic site. In stage 4, there is disseminated involvement of one or more extra lymphatic organs such as the liver. These symptoms are fever, night sweats, weight loss, itch and fatigue. If absent, add A to the stage. If present, X denotes bulky disease and S denotes splenic involvement. Treatment is with chemo and radiotherapy. Splenectomy may be indicated if the spleen is massively enlarged or there is hypersplenism. A 35-year-old woman presents for splenectomy for idiopathic immune thrombocytopenic pupura, which is not controlled with medical management. A. Which vaccinations should this patient receive and when should they be given? The answer has been mentioned in the previous question. B. List three immunological functions of the spleen in the adult. This includes synthesis of antibodies and immune proteins that facilitate phagocytosis removal from circulation of antibody-coated blood cells and bacteria, and reservoir for monocytes that can specialize into dendritic cells and macrophages. C. What are the pre-op considerations related to this patient's condition? Splenectomy is undertaken to stop splenic destruction of platelets. This is indicated if there is insufficient or non-sustained improvement with steroid treatment, very low platelet count may be present preoperatively and immunoglobulin infusions may be utilized to give a temporary boost to increase platelet counts. If platelet count is critically low, there is risk of spontaneous and catastrophic bleeding, platelet transfusions may be required. Airway. There may be swollen soft tissues due to multiple hematomas with critically low platelet count. Anticipate difficult airway. Plan for airway management involving minimal trauma. Cardiovascular. Avoid surges in blood pressure. Bleeding may be precipitated. Optimize pain relief. 
consider remifentanil infusion and obtain response to laryngoscopy. Neurology. Pain control with neurexial techniques may be contraindicated in thrombocytopenia. Avoid NSAIDs. Avoid surges in MAP, such as during straining on ETT. There is risk of intracerebral bleed due to thrombocytopenia. Endocrine. Consider perioperative steroid supplementation if the patient has had recent high-dose steroid treatment. GI. Assess for GI hemorrhage, RSI if the stomach is filled with blood. Hematology. Platelet transfusions may be required if platelet count is very low. Liaise with the hematologist. Cross-matched blood must be available due to possibility of major hemorrhage. Atypical antibodies may be present due to previous blood transfusions. Immunology. Discuss with hematologists the need for post-op antibiotic prophylaxis. Cutaneous muscular skeletal. Padding and care with handling due to risk of bruising and bleeding due to thrombocytopenia. D. Describe the rationale and principles of conservative management for traumatic splenic rupture. Rationale is to avoid major surgery with its attendant risk and retention of splenic immunological function. Patient selection is based on hemodynamic stability, grading of splenic injury on CT scan, with lower grades such as 1 and 2 being more amenable to conservative management. Local availability of radiological interventions for angioembolization if required, such as in stage 4 and stage 5, spleen injury scale, and absence of need for laparotomy for any other indication will influence direction of therapy. These are my references. Thank you.